Yeah, well, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. Today, I thought I'd take you on a bit of a walkthrough of how I set up my uh, head up, set up my swag, the swag camp. I like um, getting out in my swag, as you know, and I thought I'd um, step you through the process of setting up a swag or a swag camp, at least. Um, you know, from scratch right through to the pack up and the trip tricks and tips of, I've learned along the way about how to set it up, how to make it comfy, how to make it a bit more like glamping, and. Uh, and right through to how to pack it up and a few tick tricks on that as well because you know it's it, if you if you pack it up um well and easy it makes it easy to unpack when you get home if you have to you know um, air it out or something but uh or just just pack it away and throw it in the shed for until next time so that's the uh that's the plan for this little video so first of all you know when you when you want to go camping it's important that you find flat bit of ground if you want to stay in your swag um not always easy. Easy, yeah. You know, the bush looks flat, but it's not. It's bloody up and down all over the place. So, trying to find a bit of level, flat ground is is quite challenging from time to time. And I always, if you know, if I've got my swag, I'm always near my my car. So you know, you can't carry these things, you know, for for too far. So you can sort of only swag camp if you've got your car with you. So the fact that I've got my car means I've got. I've also got my uh, hammock and I've got a whole heap of tarps and I've got an under quilt and I've got an over quilt and I've got all sorts of things in there. So if I can't find any flat ground, I've always got a backup. But if I can find flat ground, I always use my swag. I love my swag. It's the most comfortable way to camp. And uh, the way I do it, you know, it's, it really suits me down to a T now. It's basically glamping. Um, I, I get that and I'm, I'm over 50 now, so I don't want to rough it. I don't need to be out in the bush living on a uh, under a bloody piece of canvas and freezing my ass off, I want to want to come out here and enjoy myself and and um, just you know connect with with nature, talk to the animals, look at the birds, and just you know basically smell the pollen that's coming out at the moment and and just you know really be part of part of this little experience. So and I don't want to be fighting it. So glamping, yeah, call it whatever you want. I don't care. It's uh, it's how I do it. And I thought I'd step you through it because it's it's quite a process. So as I said, first of all, you've got to find a bit of flat ground. When, once you do that, um, I always bring a ground sheet. Like I said, if I've got my car, I can bring all this stuff with me. So I always bring a ground sheet. Um, this is a bit of bit of tarp. I got it from Bunnings, cost me like 20 bucks and it's been going for three years. It does. It is missing one of the eyelets on the back corner there, but um, it's uh, it served me pretty well over the, over the years. So first things first, you find the flat ground and then you yeah, lay out your lay out your ground sheet and away you go. Start and just nail in the corners. Uh, you know, peg it down so it doesn't doesn't not go anywhere. And then it's a case of just you know get your um, get your swag out and put it onto the um, onto your ground sheet and start rolling it out. Now, this this swag I've got is a uh, twenty three zero. It's an eleven hundred wide twenty three zero. I don't know what it's called. It's, it's, it's got a name. I can't remember what it is. But the the brand is twenty three zero. The company is twenty three zero. But um, it's eleven hundred wide, so it's a little bit wide. It's wider than a normal one. Like they come in nine hundred, eleven hundred, and fourteen hundred. This is the mid range one, so like a king single. Um, and I'll talk a bit about that in a minute. But what I like about this this um, swag, and most most of kind of like this nowadays, it comes with a fairly generous canvas bag. So the bag that um, it comes in, you're not fighting it to get it in there. So and and it's got a great zipper on it. So as you can see, when on the on the um, zip, it goes right across the top and then down and across the next side. So it basically unfolds two sides of the of the canvas bag, which is brilliant, because then you can just roll it out and um, you know, fold your bag up and uh, go and store that, and and away you go. So this is the swag when it's um, all rolled up, ready to go, and ready to be unrolled. Um, it comes with D-shackles, which um, which you use to secure it nice and tight, so you can sort of roll it away. Um, so it's just a case of unclip, un unhook those, and uh, unravel the unravel the uh, strap, and then you just slowly roll it out. As you can see, I always leave my um, the poles. There's two types of poles. There's these end poles on the end here, plus the one across the middle, the ridge that uh, holds it straight. I I just roll them up inside the swag. So. Um, and with a couple of pegs, so everything's ready to go. And the reason I do that is, if you if you don't do that, you're sticking it into the canvas bag. 
you know, I've always run the risk, like it rolls around the back of my ute and I don't want it to just, you know, one of the poles to get broken because if it's only just the canvas protecting it, you know, the, the fair chance that it'll rush, bash up against the tailgate or against the um, one of the toolboxes and and uh, break one of the poles. So I always wrap them up inside the, the, the swag so they've got that extra layer of protection. It also means that if I do get somewhere and I need to set up in a hurry, it's um, everything's there ready to go. So I can just roll it out and quickly pin it down and get it secured so I can get shelter. So I don't have to be fighting around for, you know, the, the, um, you know, the poles and the pegs and uh, things from the, from the car or whatever it is. So yeah, you always roll them up inside. So, and then once you've got it rolled out, it's just a case of sort of loosely adjusting it on the, on the swag. And then it's a case of these, um, these poles, there's two types. There's these end ones that, um, that are coming three bits, as you can see, and they uh, got a bit of elastic in it. So you just clip them together. So it's kind of like a big sort of D shape or a horseshoe. And that goes into this canvas uh, sleeve here at the top. Now, when you put it in, you need to be pretty careful. You need to make sure that you put it into where it's actually going to sit before you pin it down. So these little pins on the side. So put it into where it's going to sit. So where it's loosely or roughly in the right spot and then put one of the pins in and then readjust it. Because if you don't, if it slides out and you've got more on one side than the other, when you actually put some flex in it, it can break. So I've never broken one, but I do know that this has happened. Um, I've known a lot of people who've got swags and they, they, they snap it and that's when they do it. So always make sure you've got it in the right spot before you put a bit of tension on it. And then once it's in that place and you've got the pin in this side, it's just a case of slowly bend it down and pop the pin in the other side and it pretty much stays there with this sleeve. Then it's a case of just hooking these clips on. Now, a bit like when you tie, you, you know, change your tire on your car, for some reason I always alternate sides and again it's just a case of looking after the looking after the um, the poles. So um, somewhere someone told me it's always good to pin them alternately rather than pin one side and then go on the other just in case you put too much tension on one side. So that's how I do it and it seemed, and it's never let me down. Like I said, I've never broken one over, you know, this, this swag, I've had this for you know, a few years now, so they're still going strong. Um, so you do that both ends and uh, and then it's kind of, you know, it just sort of sits there. It's a case, then it's just a case of grabbing this middle pole. So this middle pole, again, is on an elastic, um, uh, it's got a bit of elastic inside, so you can um, pin it together like it folds in half. And then you just stretch it out and it's got a, um, it's got a little adjustment on there. So it's just a case of tensioning it out so it's nice and taut. And then it's just a case of clipping this down so it stays in place and then hooking the two clips on the plastic clips so again be a bit careful with those as you as you clip them on and that holds your um holds your roof nice and taut that's the good thing about the 1100 right so the 900 i find is a little bit too small for me i like a bit of space i'm, a, I'm, I'm i roll around a bit so i like the, the extra space but if you go for the 1400 it's it's a bit too wide. These things t tend to sag. So the 1100 is just a brilliant compromise in my mind. So I, yeah, you get the extra space, but um, you don't get the, you know, the canvas sort of weighing down because of the width of it um, when, when, you're in, in, when you're inside and you've got it all locked down. The only downside of that is, of course, it is really only a one person swag. You can't really fit two people in here. It's not a bad thing um, for me. I come out swag, um, camping by myself. Um, my wife doesn't, well, she doesn't mind coming out and doing things, but Yes, you know, swag camping is probably not her thing. So, so um, it's only ever really me. So it's um, yeah, it's pretty good. I get a fair bit of space. So that's um, so that's how how the how how the structure of the the um, the swag goes together. When when as you can see, I have it zipped up, but it's not zipped up all the way. The the um, the the inner fly net I zip right up. But the uh, canvas, I just zip down the side so it's open at the bottom. And the reason I do that is so that when you roll it up at the end, the air can escape. If you zip it all, all up, yeah, this is full of air and you, you're fighting it to get, all the, to get all the air out as you roll it up. So if you just leave one of the um, sides, the canvas sides open, uh, the air can just escape nice and easy. So it's nice and easy to roll up at the end. Good little tip. And uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, how how I do it. So then it's just a case of I unzip the awning, uh, the canvas uh, awning, and I roll it up. Good little trick on how to how to do that. You you fold both sides in. You don't um, 
just try and roll it up from one side and then try and fight, race over and grab the other side because gravity will beat you every time. So if you flip the two sides in and make it into a triangle and then just roll it up from the middle, uh, you get the job done pretty easily all by yourself. It's a, it's a real easy one man job when, when you do that. And then, yeah, the, uh, the fly net, I just zip when, when I'm, uh, before I go to sleep or go to bed, I just zip it and flip it over the top. I don't bother rolling it up. So that way I can you know, start getting myself sort, sorted out inside. Um, the first thing I do when I, um, when I open the swag up is, and this was a tip trick I, I picked up from a, from a, a friend of mine that I used to work with. Um, she gave me some essential oils for Christmas one day and, uh, and this is years ago and, and it was when I got the swag, I'd, I'd only had, a few, had it a little while. And I thought, oh, that'd be handy. I'll I'll just chuck that in in the swag because you know, swags are yeah they're camping tools. They're outdoor things, so they get smoky, they get dusty, they get dirty, they get grimy. You know, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, they're not they're not the cleanest or the you know the um, most polished things in the world. And and you know you get home and you air it out, and then you just zip it up, chuck it in the canvas bag, and then I lock it in my shed, and it sits there for five weeks before I you know like it has this time before I before I use it again so it's always you know good to air it out but throwing some you know some essential oils around just you know helps helps that process a little bit and I found it something I, I, I've really you know latched onto so I always carry um, a bit of bit of oil in the in the um, in one of the little pockets and that just locks up in the in the swag so it's always in here so yeah so that's how I how I set it up and uh, go from there as you can see I've um, got a quilt inside here it's not going to be too cold tonight I think it's getting down to like maybe one or two actually we're up in the mountains here um, it's going to be one or two in Canberra so it might get down to zero tonight but um, I yeah it's a fluid thing I always roll my stuff up in the swag I, I like the idea of it all being ready to go when I if I need to I don't want to have to be lugging things out if it's raining and, and putting it into the swag so this uh, quilt is a, is a new quilt it's a full down quilt that cost me a fair bit but it's the idea is is that like in summer i just i've got a like a little thin quilt which i use in here and that's and that's usually enough at night i've got a um um you know fairly to high tolerance for being cold but when it's winter you need something a bit more a bit more sturdy so this one is a new one it's a it's a down down quilt um which i'm trying out for the first time in my last uh Last swag swag camp down on the Murrumbidgee River. If you saw that one, you'll you'll know I bought a a new winter sleeping bag, which goes down to like minus five. Um, it's a pretty good bit of gear. I do have that here with me, so if it does get cold, I'm I'm, I'm okay. But I really just want to test this out because this is kind of you know, the plan is that this um, this sort of setup will sort of look after me for probably three months of the year because you know you, and then I can just yeah don't have to think about it too much and then just have the have the super duper sleeping bag is a bit of backup and the other thing and this is a tip I, I guess you could you you could call it I never sleep with the canvas awning closed front this one on the front or either these ones on the on the end I leave the whole thing open and there's a couple of reasons why I do that one I like to be able to look out I, you know quite often you get animals coming wandering through when when you settle in and um, it's always nice to you know, be able to look out and see see some kangaroos or some wallabies or even a wombat would be awesome. But I haven't ever seen one of those. But I've had possums, you know, come right up to the to the swag. It's really cool just to have, you know, have that have that um, ability to see what's going on outside. But the other thing is I cannot stand condensation. So, like, there's one thing being cold, but being wet and cold is impossible to get over. So I leave the swag. With just the with just the mozzie net, just the fly net, when I when I sleep, and that's um, that's enough. So usually, if it, there's no chance of rain and it's the middle of summer, I'll just leave the swag like this because you know, um, hopefully, you know, you get through the night. But no matter what happens in winter, even if it's not going to rain and there's no rain predicted for tonight, as you can see, it's nice and blue. But what we can expect is some condensation. So. Yeah, dew point it's probably around four or five degrees so certainly going to reach below that tonight so it's important if you you know you come out in your swag that you bring a tarp so yeah so this is how i set up my uh set up my swag
always with a tarp if there's going to be some rain or in condensation. So yeah, so just having a bit of a look around inside the swag, as you can see, I've got a um, bit of paracord attached between the two little cables here, and I use that to hang my iPad on so I can uh, lie, in, lie in the swag and watch a movie or something like that, or even just read my book without having to hold it in my hands because it gets a bit heavy. But uh, yeah, so I've got that. Um, these swags, they all come with um, you know, four little pockets on the end which uh, you know you can put all your stuff in and uh, like I said plenty of room I usually uh, you know usually sleep in here with my water bottle um, usually you know all my electronics particularly when it's cold I like to uh, yeah do, I've got a battery pack which I charge my phone and um, and uh, anything else some cameras and stuff like that so if I if I do need to you know charge things I do it in here where it's a bit warmer so the batteries you know don't get too too cold overnight um, as you can see, I have a the, the ground sheet. I set this up so I've always got this little landing pad. I always put my boots on here, a pair of thongs, so I can get up and go to the you know, toilet if I need to in the middle of the night. I don't have to put shoes on. Um, but yeah, so this little spot is is good to just put things that you don't want inside your, inside your um, inside the swag. But yeah, so that's it. That's my setup. Pretty easy, pretty cool. A lot of little tricks and tips I've learned along the way, and I hope you hope you found that bit good. And uh, oh, one other thing I, I have on these on these swags is a little uh, luminescent, fluorescent, whatever you want to call it, glow in the dark toggles on all of the uh, little, yeah, you know, on the, all of the little zippers. Uh, nothing worse than in the middle of the night trying to figure out where your bloody zipper is, because you know you think you zip it in the same way every time, but you don't. You zip it every every time. You zip differently. So always good to be able to see where they are when you wake up and if, if, in the, when it's when it's pitch black. And you don't have to want to turn your torch on or anything like that. But yeah, that's it. That's my sweat up. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, check back in tomorrow when I pack up and we'll go through the go through the pack up routine. And uh, hopefully you'll find that just as enjoyable. But yeah, talk to you in the morning. Yeah, well, good morning. It's like nothing ever happened. Yeah, it's had a good night out here in... Um, Beautiful Nunawar country, and uh, I'm about to pack up the pack up the swag. As you can see, I've taken the tarp down. It's a bit frosty this morning, so fingers are a bit cold. Uh, there's a bit of ice on the on the tarp, so that'll be fun when I get home. But yeah, I'm about to just step you through the pack up process and how I uh, how I pack it up and what I leave in the tarp and um, yeah, how I sort of arrange it when I when I roll it up and put it back in the in the bag. But first of all, yeah, like I said, I do charge all my gear inside the swag overnight where it's a bit warmer probably a good thing last night so it's a case of you know getting in and just packing everything up and making sure you've got everything it's one of the important tips thoroughly go through your swag like seriously twice on two occasions I've packed everything up got it back in the car back in the back of the ute about to head off and couldn't find my keys it's it's like so deflating you've had a great couple of days out in the bush and and then you just got to unpack your bloody swag and get your keys out so thoroughly go through your bag can't stress that enough all of these little pockets go through them all and uh just make sure it is i always lift up the mattress as well and just check to see that there's nothing slipped under the mattress no all good no all good on that front and uh so yeah Make sure you get your keys. So yeah, that's the first tip when you're packing up. Make sure you thoroughly go through your swag. And then just make sure you, you, you do leave what you want to leave behind. And as I said, I learn things and you know, come up with new ideas every, every time I stay out in the, in the swag. And uh, last night, like these, I don't know what you can see what these are. These are Peter Alexander bed socks, like so super fluffy bed socks. I was giving them to me, um, given to me as a birthday present a few years ago. I never really wear them, but I chucked them in my bag when I came out because I knew it was going to be cold, and I wasn't didn't have my I wasn't going to be using my sleeping bag. So this will be the new addition. I'll I'll just leave these in the swag and roll them up in there, so they're always here because I'm not going to wear them anywhere else. So probably a good spot for them. Um, like I said, I always leave leave a um, little bottle of 
essential oils for when for when I uh, unpack it next time, so I can just splash it around and try and you know get rid of some of the smell, dust, musty smells. I always leave my pillow, and I'm going to be leaving my doona in here as well. I didn't talk about my pillow. Like one of the other good things about having a um, having your car and and being able to bring your swag is you can bring a pillow. I've tried a half a dozen of those bloody blow up pillows, and none of them are. I'd like to say it's generous to say none of them are no good. They're worse than that. They are terrible. They are the worst things on the planet. Like if, if you want to have a bad sleep, use a bloody blow up pillow. I would prefer to use no pillow, quite frankly. But when you've got your swag, you can have a proper pillow, which is good because yeah, comfort's important. And like I said, I've got this new down quilt, which I'll leave in here as well. I'll leave the sheet in here. I'll usually um, yeah, wash it after a couple of, couple of, um, couple of trips. Um, depends on how smoky it gets, really. It wasn't too bad last night. The the fire was okay. It wasn't um wasn't the wood wasn't too wet, so it wasn't too smoky. But yeah, so that's it. So that's that's how I sort of leave, leave my swag when I go to pack it up, and then it's just a case of reversing the process. So zipping up the um the fly screen so it's fully fully zipped up, zipping the bringing the uh, canvas uh, door down and zipping it down to about here. Um, so that this bot's bottom bit's open, so that way when I roll it up, all the air can escape. Uh, it's a case of then take the, the poles out carefully, you know, reverse process again, just take them out carefully so that you don't break them and uh, put them somewhere safe so you don't forget where they are. And then uh, undo the um, the other one up the, top, up the top and then sort of just roll it, lay it down so these things, these ones will come down in on top. And then just make sure that these, because these will flop out, so just pull, pull them towards, so it's all packed in, in as nicely as you can. The little doors on the end, it's just a case of un, unpeg, the, unpeg the stake and roll, fold that up as well. So it's all sitting there in a nice little rectangle, ready to go. And then it's a case of slowly rolling it from the end where it unrolled from. So you roll from this end, the, the D shackles are up this end and the um, straps are going to be on this end. So you roll from this end so that the straps sort of reveal themselves as you roll. And then when you get to the get to the last bit, you can then just bring the straps up loosely into the shackles, one each side, and that'll hold it in place. And then you can get, then you can muscle it down and, and, and get it nice and tight. And then it's just a case of reversing the, the canvas bag roll. So you just lay the canvas bag out the way you know, it's designed with the with the tongue on there and then you just roll it along the tongue and it sort of just rolls straight into the canvas bag. It's brilliant. And then, yeah, just zip it up, chuck it on your truck. Away you go. Yeah, all up, it takes about five minutes to set it up and about five minutes to pull it down. So it's a pretty easy setup. It's not, it doesn't, it's not, not hard work either. It's, you know, quite enjoyable. So yeah, nothing wrong with the swag. Love swag camping. So Hope you found this really enjoyable. Hope you found it useful and informative, and I hope you picked up a few tips along the way. Um, that was the plan. I, I've watched a fair few people set up their ta uh, swags on uh, YouTube videos over the years, and and picked up things here and there. The you know blow in the dark things was one of them, but uh, yeah, the a great fan tale up there. Um, but yeah, so hope hope you found this as useful as I found other people. Um, you know, given given a few tips. But that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, stay safe.